God has always been in control. Since the beginning of time, He's always been in control. I think sometimes we get used to us being in control and we forget that He is ultimately in control. But God gives us free will. Now, why am I saying all this? Well, today, I feel like I made a really big mistake, but I know that I live a lifestyle that is so submitted to God that a mistake, I don't calculate how I could have made it. I don't. And as I was sitting in my car, you know, wanting to freak out or cry, you know, having mixed emotions about this mistake that I feel like I made that would somehow shift my life, God had to just remind me, Courtney, I've always been in control. It's only in the moments that we think we're in control and that we're kind of sharing that control with God. No, he's sharing that control with us. He is the one sharing with us. And so if we're not careful, we can get so used to a lifestyle of we're in control, but God has, you know, his hand in it sometimes. And we only wait on the Lord whenever we're in a bad predicament and we don't know what to do. But what if we flipped it? What if our lifestyle was always waiting on the Lord, always asking and always Seeing if if this is okay, dad. Can I do this, dad? We're always at his service waiting on him. I like that lifestyle a lot better. Not a lifestyle of crying and sobbing when we make a mistake and we have to say, God, now I have to wait on you to fix it. But if we have this this lifestyle of always waiting on the Lord, I'm not going to say we're never going to have a problem. We're never going to have, you know, hiccups. But it'll be far less because we will realize and come to this realization that my Abba is in control. This doesn't take him by surprise. Nothing that I do takes him by surprise. In fact, he knew everything, every mistake, even though he gives me free will. He knew every mistake. It's the fact that we've taken this term called free will and we have manipulated it into control. Where we think our free will is actually control over our life. No, it's not. We don't have any control over our lives. And I like it better that way. It seems unpredictable and maybe scary. If you're one to think that you actually had control over your life this entire time. But if you step outside this realm of time. And if you step outside of yourself for a moment. And you're gazing from the heavenly courts you'll realize that this entire time I never had anything in control. Therefore, there's no mistake I could have ever made outside of my daddy's reach. There's no mistake, quote unquote, that I've ever made that my daddy didn't already see it coming, that he didn't already know, that he didn't already plan for. Ah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful way of living. It's like living in a different realm where we realize I'm not my own. We're not just saying my life is not my own when it comes to deep heartfelt worship and we're moved in a service. But my life is not my own when I make a mistake. My life is not my own whenever I'm happy. My life is not my own whenever I'm sad. My life is not my own, period. In fact, I've been bought with a high price. So that's just some thought for you today. As I began to, you know, I never got upset Because I had so much assurance from my father to move forward on something that I asked him about, that I waited on him for, that I even asked for confirmation. I I did a whole Gideon and I asked for confirmation. And then as soon as I did it, it literally, picture this, this has been almost a week long process of a big decision I've been making. This whole time, 
this big mistake that I feel like I made. I'm not even going to call it a mistake because I'm just so happy and so blessed by the Lord's peace right now to know that it's not a mistake. But this big error, it never presented itself before the fact, in between all of the decisions that I've been making, the small decisions up until the big one, it, it never affected it. I mean, it never came up, sorry. The, the problem that I'm facing now, it never shown itself until after I said, okay, dad, I trust you. I'm going to make the big girl move. I'm going to make this big decision. And the moment I did that, a couple hours later, my mind starts thinking and I'm like, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. What am I going to do, dad? Then I start asking because I wait on my father at all times. Daddy, did I miss it? Dad, did I do this out of my own? Nah, no. Nah. He said, no, baby. For you to have done this out of your own ambition, it would have meant that you thought you was in control of your own life. But if I replay our worship sessions and our morning talks and our afternoon prayer, I would know, Courtney, that you live a life submitted to me and that you know that your life is not your own. So, wow, God continues to blow my mind. Even in the midst of me feeling like I made a uh-oh, here comes my daddy. He pulls me up in his lap. He sits me down. He talks to me. He hugs me. You know, the only reason I want to cry now is because of how beautiful my father is. He's simply amazing. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's simply amazing. I think a year ago, maybe even a few months ago, I would have been sick. I would have been crying. I would have been muting my phone so nobody can talk to me. I would have been, you know, telling my son, like, mommy made a mistake. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I would have been cursing my own situation give it a few months to a year ago but now I'm over here like okay daddy wait a minute (laughs) but I think if this problem had presented itself before I made the big step out on faith I would not have made that big step out on faith I would have said oh well God doesn't want me to do that because if he did then this wouldn't have been a problem I would have went forward with it. I know I'm talking like in circles because y'all are like, what is the problem? What's the mistake? I'm going to share it in due time. And I'm going to wait for the, I'm going to share it when the testimony is ripe for the picking. Um, But just know to anyone else, I mean, to me, even 10 minutes ago, it seemed like a big issue, a big mistake. But now that I've just sat down in my car, you know, I haven't been on Google being like, what can I do? How can I fix this? yada 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 like I took a moment once I realized the mistake I made verified I verified um that I actually did make the mistake um in human terms and with our human eyes you know not with my not spiritually speaking and then I just continued to just sit down and say daddy like what what did I miss I repent if I missed anything. You know, I just began to just say those things. If I missed anything, I repent. If I didn't, you know, and the beautiful thing about my Abba is as soon as I was talking to, um, I talked with someone who was, who's going to help me out and help me find a solution. He's actually a man of God. Thank God. He sent me to the right place even. Like all of it, all of it down to a T. God orchestrated and now I'm sitting here like okay daddy this is unexpected what are you about to do because I know it's going to be good he causes all things to work out for my good if we're not rooted in him which is the word of God we'd be in panic mode SOS wee 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 like help but I know that he works out all things for my good because I'm called according to his purpose because I'm submitted to him because I'm his daughter, because I love him. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you. 
I pray that this blesses you. I pray that this resonates with your spirit and that the Holy Spirit would download even further revelation to you, that your mind would be able to comprehend that which the Holy Spirit is trying to relate to you. That simply put, your life is not your own. And the joy and the life that you have been wanting and expecting, it starts as soon as you end this agreement that you've made with yourself and with life that you had any control over it. We don't. I know I'm going to reach a point where I'm going to feel like my words are not my words and I'm going to be like, you didn't know what you was talking about, girl. Whatever. But then I, God's going to reel me back in and be like, girl, calm down. That was the Holy Spirit speaking through you and to you. Because I know life is unpredictable. It is. But thank God life is not my own. Thank God he's in control. Thank God you can't miss God whenever your life is not your own. You can't miss him. He's everywhere. Whenever your life is not your own, you're always looking for how are you speaking? What are you saying? You're always looking for it. Always. Because I am. Now that I have been walking out, a, I walk and God has shown me a different side of his face I've been like, okay, well, now what, Daddy? Daddy, is this you talking? Daddy, what are you trying to say? It's like he's holding my hand through life, literally. And that whole time I've just been, Daddy this, Daddy that, Daddy this. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Like, he's amazing. So I'm going to proceed with joy. Nothing can take my joy. He works all things out for my good. And my life is not my own. It's his. Be blessed. See you in the next video. Bye.